You are now listening to Changing Lives, a podcast presented by Mount Gilead Full Gospel International Ministries, hosted by co pastor Elena Robertson. Welcome back to Changing Lives. We're changing lives with the Word of God. So excited to have you back with us doing this episode. This is episode 25. And today we're going to be talking about be intentional. And um, that has been uh, a, a word that that God has been fixed in my spirit uh, over the last few weeks about being intentional about everything I do. And so when you look at, as we get right into it, when you look at the word intentional, it is, it, it is it, this is the definition. It says, what one intends to do or bring about to obtain a certain outcome or result. This is uses your intent. Um, it's a determination to act in a certain way. It's having a resolve. That means you, you you're determined that I'm going. To, I want this, so I'm going to do this in order to get that. And um, and that's what God wants us to have. Um, because if you don't have uh, a determination in you, you can't expect things to just fall into your lap. And so. And really, when you look at being intentional, it, it's, it's connected to being a planner, you know, and God is a planner. You know, we know that from out of Jeremiah 29, 11. I mean, this is a scripture we hear over and over again, and, and it talks about the plans that he has to, for us. So he has planned our light, life out. And so, um, and, and it goes on to say that he, uh, he has plans that to give us a hope and a future, to give us an expected end. So there was an end result that God wanted for our lives. And so our lives are a living example of God being intentional. And so he He gave us certain things because he intends for us to succeed. He intends for us to prosper. He intends for us to get to that expected end that he has planned for us. Um, and Habakkuk 2.2 2, um, you know, it's evident that he he is very big on being intentional. Because even when you look at Habakkuk 2 and 2, where it talks about right division, make it plain, plain upon tables that he that readeth it may run. Why would you, um, you know, why would you wa- want to write a vision down if you have no intent on fulfilling that vision or 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 bringing results um, to get for that vision to come to pass. And so God is an intentional God, and he wants us to be intentional about everything that we do. You know, so we can't, you know, we can't, we we can't go on, the devil made me do it, you know, oh, I have no choice. No, we have a choice. Every single day when we wake up, we have a choice to be intentional about getting to an end result. You want to have a good day? You have to be intentional about that. You want to have a good marriage? You have to be intentional intentional about that. <clears throat> and so the word intentional can bring a sense of purpose and meaning that will guide our thoughts, our words, and our action. And those are key things that I want you to hone in on because I'm going to share with you some, some key points that are going to help you to, to, to be intentional. Okay. And so at when you're intentional, it causes you to be focused and it causes you to move towards that thing that you're focusing on. When you have a bullseye and you want to hit that big red dot in the middle, you have to look intently at that bullseye. And whatever you're shooting at, whatever it's a dart, whether it's an arrow, you that when you look at that bullseye, it draws your attention to it and it causes everything else, your thoughts, your actions, everything else to go towards that dot. And so that's how it should be in our lives. When we have something that we want to reach for, we want a successful marriage. We want to to have a healthy body. We want to have good relationships with our our family, our friends. Um we want to um to 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 prosper, you know. So you have to be intentional about that, okay? <clears throat> and so anything worth having is worth working for, okay? And 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 that is what it is when you're intentional. In Colossians 3.23, it talks about whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, okay? And so when, 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 when you give your all to it, 
you're being intentional. You know, when you're just halfway doing something, you really don't want it bad enough. Okay. When you want something bad enough, when you really want to obtain something to the point where you get up early in the morning, where every single day you systematically do what you need to do to reach that goal, that's called being intentional. So I intend to to succeed. I intend to be healthy. I intend to have a good marriage. So those are things. So there are things that I um, systematically do that I premeditate on doing that I think about this is what I'm going to carry out before I do it. And so um, when you look in your life, um, there are some key things, you know, and so let's use this scripture to kind of help us to to get the right target or the right bullseye, the right focus, okay? And Ephesians 5.10, this is a message version, the V part of that says, figure out what will please Christ and do it or figure out what will please God. You know, in, in, um, in Hebrews, it talks about that um, it, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we have to have faith and faith is it's action. OK. And so so we got to figure out what is it that makes God happy? What is it that he wants us to put our faith on? OK. And then we need to do it. OK. And so. But there are some ingredients that go with being intentional, okay? And so with being intentional, uh, and when we combine what we're thinking, what we're feeling, and what we're doing, three major things, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, and what we're doing, you know? And so the first step, when when, when you start out with being intentional, you got to deal with the mind. Come on now, y'all know that I'm the mind of Christ lady. All right. And so when you deal with the mind, you deal about, you deal with what you're thinking. Let's use the example of a, a, um, a blessed marriage. Say, say you want a blessed marriage. Maybe your marriage is rocky. Maybe your marriage, you, maybe you have a lot of things in your marriage that you're not so happy about. Okay. So first we have to start with what are we thinking in our minds about our marriage? Are you thinking, you know, whether it's your husband or your wife, are you thinking, oh, they're the worst person ever. They're they're mean, they're nasty, they don't want to do what they, you know, what's necessary to make this marriage work. Um, they're insensitive, they're they're selfish. Uh, are those thoughts that you're thinking all the time about your marriage? Oh, it's not a good marriage. Is you know, are you always looking at the grass that's on the other side? And then when you think think about your own marriage or are you thinking that it's a bad marriage okay and so so when you're intentional about something you assess your thoughts you think about what am i thinking about as it pertains to my marriage you got to gather that information to see okay um you know um is that are those thoughts lined up with the word of god all right and so 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 that's the next step the next thing is you got to deal with you're your feeling what, what, what you're seeing. OK, um, how you're feeling about it and assessing and then filtering those feelings, those emotions, those thoughts with the word of God. So what's your insight about your marriage? Is your insight about your marriage is, you know, uh, you know, have you been watching The Real Housewives or, you know, or have you been looking at so-and-so that seems like, oh, they got it all together, but you don't know what goes on behind the scenes? What's your example of, of what you consider or have insight for as it pertains to having a good marriage? Is that what we want? You know, and so when you look at that, so you have to look into um, the situation in a new way. So you look at your marriage and you say, okay, you know, maybe this is not happening. That's not happening. But what is happening? Okay. And you got to be very careful about calling things that are bad that God calls good. Now, when God calls something good, he's not looking at the present situation. He's looking at what it will become. OK, and that's what we as people of faith have to do. We have to look at those things that that, that as it will become. OK, because if you're constantly looking at where you are, you'll never get to where you need to go. OK, and so, you know, so God calls, you know, uh, your, your, your wife a good thing. OK, um, when he created man, he said this is good, that we are good. 
you know, and so, so, and then marriage, it's a good thing, you know, and so you have to look at your marriage as it's a good marriage. It may not be a perfect marriage, but is it being perfected? Which means, are you allowing God to perfect you? And is he allowing God to perfect him? And so, so, so you got to change your mind when, you know, stop thinking about it's a bad marriage. It's, it's not this, it's not that. Start thinking about what is good and what will become better. Amen. And so that's the insight. That's dealing with how you feel about something and you've assessed it and you changed your thoughts. So, so instead of you waking up in the morning, you're thinking, oh, I'm so tired of him. He ain't going to do no, he's no uh, good for nothing. He's not going to do anything today. Or um, you're thinking, you're expecting the worst to come from that person. You're expecting their reaction. You're expecting how they're going to handle a certain situation to be the same as it always has been, as opposed to expecting good to come out, expecting change to come. Okay. So, so you dealt with your thinking and you're dealing with what you're feeling inside. And then, so now you have to line it up with your actions. Okay. What you're doing. Okay. And so one of the things that I, 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 I've learned to do is to constantly invest in my marriage because you got two human beings together. You got work on your hands. Okay. And if you don't allow yourself to be placed in a position where God is constantly working on you, working with what you're thinking, working with what you're feeling, working with what you're doing, then you could be the really the person that's the weakest link that's in the marriage and you think it's your spouse. Okay. And so, but when you determine that every single day, like I've resolved in my in my marriage, every single day, I'm going to make an investment in my marriage. I'm intentional about it. So that means my marriage is good, but it's going to get better and better and better and better day after day. Okay. So, 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 so my determination is this to always deal with my thoughts. And so by dealing with my thoughts, I mean, I have devotionals that I meditate on every day um, and the scriptures that I meditate on the day, every day when the enemy comes and says, oh, he's this, he's that. You know, when the word of God is on the inside of you, you know, it will arrest those, those, those thoughts that are not, that are not lined up according to the word of God. And so, and so, so then when, when you're thinking and your emotions and your feeling, your insight is is going in the right direction, then you are compelled to do something about it. Okay. And so you do things, you do things that 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 will lean, lean to or invest in having a good marriage, a great marriage. Okay. And so those three components are components of being intentional. Okay. So dealing with your thoughts. Dealing with your feelings, your emotions, your insight, what, what, what you what you perceive, okay, and lining those up with the word of God, and then your actions that 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 so so meditating on doing good things is not good enough, but doing it is is where you get the results, okay. And so when you balance all those things out, that gives you the ingredients of being intentional. And so I'm determined that in in my faith, which means my walk with God, I'm going to be intentional. So every morning I'm going to get up. Okay. I've trained myself. I mean, there are times when I, I, you know, I, my body tell me, uh, no, I don't feel like getting up. And I don't, and I didn't. But then when I got to that place where, oh, no, I'm going to be intentional about my walk with God, my relationship with God, getting getting more intimate with him, getting going deeper in him. And so if I'm intentional, that means early in the morning, I'm going to seek him. That means I'm going to get in the word of God. That means I'm going to pray. I'm going to worship. All of those things are being intentional about drawing near to God. And so I'm going to be intentional about my faith. I'm going to be intentional about my family. I'm going to be intentional about doing specific things that I know that's going to make for a wholesome, peaceful relationships in my family, um, uh, creating moments that that makes it enjoyable to be around each other. I'm intentional about that. So I'm intentional about the atmosphere in my home. I'm intentional about how I engage individuals in my family. I'm intentional about being compassionate about you know, others and and having empathy for how others are uh, feeling and what they're going through and what they may be contending with. 
And so those are things that that I set myself up to be concerned about someone else in my family other than what's going on with myself. I'm intentional, intentional about my health, okay? And so even though there may be times when I'm slipped and I may, you know, backslide, but hey, I'm intentional about getting on track and saying, okay, you're going to drink the water you need because you know you need water in your body. You're going to be intentional about eating the right foods, the vegetables, the veggies, the healthy things. You know, every now and then, maybe have a little here and a little there, um, you know, with some sweets or something like that. But that shouldn't be the norm if you're if you're intentional about being healthy. If you know that salt drives your blood pressure up, you know, eating bacon and all those things, if you're doing that on a consistent basis, you're really not being intentional intentional about being healthy. You can pray and you say, God, I'm praying, you know, that, you know, that I'll be in good health today. But until you pull away from that bacon, you pull away from that table, you get on that treadmill, you're not going to get the results. So, but when you are intentional about saying, okay, no to this, no, I'm not going to eat that big old chocolate piece of cake. I'm going to slice it up and I'm going to be a blessing to somebody else. (laughs) Hallelujah. But I'm going to be intentional about being healthy. And being healthy is not just the physical part, it's the mental part too, having a healthy mind. I'm going to be intentional about that, which means I'm going to purposely line myself up to meditate on the Word of God day and night. Because you know in Psalms 1, it talks about that's where that that that, that blesses that man, you know, that meditates on the Word day and night. You'd be like that tree planted by the rivers of living water where you constantly <laughs> are in the flow. Hallelujah. And so and so I'm intentional about that. I'm intentional about finances, my finances, about prospering, about being a good steward, about being a seed sower, about being a blessing to others. I'm intentional about that. So I'm not just thinking about getting, getting, getting and hoarding. No, I'm thinking about, well, how can I be a blessing to somebody else? I'm thinking about when I'm hearing somebody talk about their situation and all that, and maybe they're, they're not necessarily dropping hints that they need help here and there, but I'm listening with the intent to see, okay, uh, how can I be a blessing? So that's being intentional when I'm engaged in what's going on in other people's lives, okay? And so, and when I'm intentional about sowing seed, that that I don't just think that prosperity is going to come, you know, just because I'm saying money coming. No, I'm intentional about me and my husband, my household. We train our children, be intentional about uh, uh, being prosperous, okay? I'm intentional about what God has given my hands to do and ministry, you know, uh, 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 the work of ministry, you know, being intentional about specific things. You can't just wish it. You can't just hope it. I mean, you start there, but then when when, when you really want something bad enough, you are driven by being uh, 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 flowing in intent. So you align your thoughts your emotions and your actions, what what you intend to do. And so I pray that when you endeavor to do something, what is it that you believe in God for? You need to be intentional about that. You want to go and look for uh, a better job. Well, you can't just, just, you know, go around telling people, oh, I want a better job. I want a better job. No, you are the person that has to deal with your thinking. You have to think, okay, I can do better than this. I can get a better job. God is opening doors for me. I'm favored, highly favored of God. I believe that I have favor. I believe that as I wake up this morning, that God has given me favor with men because I have favor with God. And therefore, God's going to open doors for me, hallelujah, to have a better situation where I can get a better job. You're being intentional. So what do you do? So not only have you got your thoughts lined up, now you got your heart lined up. Now what do you do? You go and you start looking for a job, whether it's the internet, whether you're asking other people, whether you're putting in resumes or or getting your resume together and putting putting it out. You're being intentional about getting a better job. Okay, you want a better living situation. You got to be intentional. Maybe you have debt that's going on in your life. And so um, maybe, you know, you can't necessarily qualify for home because you got this debt. Well, you got to be intentional about eradicating that debt. OK, so if you are intentional, then that means you're not going to go spin, 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 spin. That means you may have to ch- to, you know, to say, OK, well, I'm not going to be going out to eat for this period of time because I'm going to take that money and I'm going to eliminate debt as opposed to eating up 
the money that you could use to eliminate debt. And so, but when you're intentional about that, you're like, okay, I'm going to make my meal at home. And I'm going to be happy with that meal at home. I'm going to have a good attitude because how many know when you have the right attitude, that also is like a magnet to those things that you are intentional about. So what do you do when you want to be intentional about something? One, you you get your thoughts straight, your thinking. Okay, what information, what you're meditating on inside. And two, you get your emotions, your heart straight, those things that, you, that you've been pondering in your heart. You get that straight, right? And then you get out there and do it. You be a doer of the word. Whatever you do, you do it wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. You put action to your faith and you will attain those things that God has placed in your heart to receive. So be intentional. All right. God bless you. This has been another episode of Changing Lives. Be sure to subscribe to stay updated on new episodes. Also, find us on the web at mountgileadfgim.org. And follow us on Instagram at mountgileadfgim.org.